This is a model of HMS Royal George, a first-rate ship of the line launched in 1756. A magnificent example of one of the largest warships of the Age of Sail. Ships like this shaped the modern world. The Royal George was built at the Royal Dockyard of Woolwich in London. It took 10 years to complete, and at the time of her launch, she was the largest warship in the world. First-rate warships were the largest in the fleet. They were designed to carry at least 100 guns, and they sailed with a complement of up to 1,000 men. She would have been 54.3 meters long, a little over two tennis courts, and 15.8 meters wide. To our modern mind, this might seem quite small, but for a wooden ship, it was enormous. This exquisite model was made by a team of the finest craftsmen in the country and was presented to King George III as a means of encouraging him to take an interest in his navy. It is a work of art as much as it is a model. It has even been decorated with bone and pearl to make it gleam in flickering light. The stern is particularly heavily decorated to emphasize the importance of this area, where the officers slept and dined. The painted bulwark screens at the top of the hull show mythical sea creatures, foliage, and trophies of war. The gun ports, shown open as if ready for action, are painted with a lion's head. Note how they are staggered vertically so they do not fall one above the other. An innovation that ensured the stresses of broadside gunfire were spread evenly, as each port was, potentially, a weak spot in the framing. The model is shown here planked on one side, but open on the other, to reveal the glorious complexity of her hull construction. These ships required vast quantities of timber, as many as 2,000 trees or 60 acres of forest for a ship this big. The rudder would have been almost 11 meters tall and nearly two meters wide at its broadest point. The model is not rigged, but the ship would have had three huge masts, the tallest around 62 meters high. She would have carried an immense cloud of canvas, but it was common practice in the 18th century to omit rigging on models, as it was both time-consuming and expensive to make in miniature. Her hull is shown here unpainted, but in the middle decades of the 18th century, it's likely that she would have been painted red, distinctly different from the yellow and black color scheme that became famous later in the century under the influence of Horatio Nelson. The intricate figurehead depicts the youthful King George III in classical warrior's uniform. The horse's heads show the pulsating veins and flared nostrils, a moment of energy and violence frozen in time. The figurehead represents a clear moment of innovation in the changing decorative designs of the bow. Here the figurehead is shown as a double figure in mirrored relief. Before then, the figurehead was a single complete statue on top of the bow. Here, there are only three rails connecting the figurehead to the bow, where previously there would have been four. This was all part of a process reducing weight on the bow to improve seaworthiness. The beakhead area of the bow is decorated with carved and painted motifs. The semicircular roundhouses were the toilets for the officers, whilst the crew used the more basic seats of ease shown here as four rectangular stools. The large angular beams protruding out from the bow were known as catheads, which supported the heavy iron anchors. The internal fittings of this model have been constructed with as much care as the external. Here, we can peek inside the model in the senior officer's cabins and see the parquet flooring, inlaid doors, and metal fire hearths. A ship of this size required a large double wheel operated by four crew when the weather conditions were bad. The quarter deck and poop deck above the wheel was where the ship was commanded. Along the edge of the poop deck above the wheel is an inclinometer to show the ship's angle of heel when under sail, an important safety feature. The middle of the ship, known as the waist, is where the ship's boats were stored and provided access to the decks and hold below via the hatches. The large gratings provided light as well as ventilation to the decks below. 
Magnificent ships like this were born from four centuries worth of learning the art and science of constructing large ships. And yet, there was still much to learn. The Royal George enjoyed a good career, but was lost in 1782, when she capsized at anchor off Spithead with immense loss of life. Around 1,200 people died. It still remains one of the UK's worst maritime disasters.